So this is, uh, that, well, that was Form 0, which um, had a very subtle animation. All the, the, um, the text would move around. Um, they're actually animated GIFs, um, just to give it a little bit of an effect. It's a little bit hard to see it on camera. Um, but then, basically, after the program has initialized in the clear core, the clear core will move the, um, move the animation on and then change into Form, form 1, which is the first page you see here, which is the main screen. So here we're presented with uh, three different axis um, options. So you can you have um, three buttons here which basically go into the more information for each axis, each axis being each motor. Um, we have a start and stop button for each, and then a status which basically shows an animation when the, when the motor is moving and also the direction of movement. So if I was to start um, axis zero, And axis zero and um, will move in its predefined configuration and you can see the, the status is moving with the animation so if we go into the information for axis zero then the current position steps is the readout from the motor um, each motor has a encoder in it and it will basically tell you the exact position of the motor and so the move distance here is basically setting where this is driving to and then goes back to zero again. The velocity is the speed that it's going to, to drive at based on the acceleration for the ramp up and ramp down. And then the dwell is how long it waits um, once it gets to the destination before it changes direction. So it also has a, an animation up here um, just showing the movement. And the torque, and a torque readout. So if if I was to apply a load onto onto here, which I can't really do with my fingers, the motor's just too powerful. Um, the t the torque figure will go up. Um, there's some fault information here. So a fault light will come up. Um, this is I've been able to simulate this. Basically, if, if you set the speed or the acceleration too high, um, for the based on the distance, then you can generate a fault. Um, and then it's a case of you can clear the fault. Um, it also um, requires you to, to stop the motor uh, or change the parameters before you start it again. Uh, otherwise it will just do it again. And then there's a continuous mode button there um, which basically um, allows the motor to drive continuously in the forward direction, so from zero upward. Um, and, uh, it takes over from the normal programming, which is the, the forward and backwards movement based on the, the steps, um, the distance, and the dwell. So if I was to do that now, I'd, it just stays driving in the forward direction. And this uh, particular position counter is 16 bits, so it only counts to 65535. Um, it's just for simplicity for this particular demo, but the encoder itself keeps driving up. So if this widget was to be changed to some other readout, then we could um, continuously read whatever the, the, clear, um, the, the clear path motor is actually outputting. So then you disable the, the continuous mode and then it will drive back to zero again. And once we get into range, um, the, the um, LED digits will start reading uh, correctly again. And once it returns to zero, it'll just carry on its normal forward-backwards motion again. So each of the parameters here for distance, velocity, acceleration, and dwell can be changed. So if you click the edit button, then you're presented with this screen, which is common for all of the parameter changes. Um, it knows how many digits you're allowed to change for each given parameter. So this is the um, this was for distance. So we can see it's a, a five-digit number. So if we go into here, I can change this to say 15,000 and push enter. And then now it will drive to 15,000 and back to zero again. So for the, the velocity and acceleration, the four digit numbers. So if I click edit on this, then it will only allow me to enter four digit numbers. So say I wanted to do 4,000, it won't let me do 40,000 for example. 
And if I wanted to change my mind, then I can change it and then push enter. So now the, the motor goes a lot faster. And it's the same deal for acceleration and dwell. So if I enter dwell, say 100. Then it will go forward and backwards with only a hundred millisecond dwell between them. So axis zero is the only one that I've allowed for um, continuous mode. Axis one and axis two are, are just um, slightly different. They only have the clear fault. They have no ability to do continuous mode. Um, this is just to give some difference in the program and just show how continuous mode can be done. Um, so this if we start three and four, the animations are all independent of each other. We can stop all three. Oh, I must have missed that one. So you can start it just by swiping on all three buttons. And same for stopping. And that's basically it. So, yeah, this uh, adapter makes it easy to connect the 4D module to the clear core. Um, before you would have to make up a custom cable um, to make this happen. So, uh, makes it certainly a lot easier to do.